I guess it's no secret that libraries and reading is kind of important to me. Even after I left the NEA, came home to Los Angeles, not to San Francisco, to Los Angeles. And yeah, um, I, I, uh, I opened this, well, basically the, the short version is, I am a transit geek. Um, you know, if, if, uh, if Metrolink out this way had opened while I was in DC, desperately homesick, missing Los Angeles County like a kidney, uh, the first thing I would have done when I came back to LA was I would have hopped on Metrolink because I'm the kind of guy who rode the red line and the blue line the first day they opened. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I had missed the opening of the gold line. So when I got home, practically the first thing I did, I got on the gold line and I went to this neighborhood called Boyle Heights. And Boyle Heights, if you believe my family, was once 100% Jewish. Yeah. And this is what, in Yiddish, we call a bubamaisa. <laughs> an old wives tale, a lie. Boyle Heights was never 100% Jewish. Maybe it was 70% Jewish. Probably never more than 40% Jewish. Um, but maybe, and I hadn't thought of this before, it's kind of typical that people think it was all theirs because the African Americans who were in Boyle Heights in the 30s and 40s and the Japanese Americans and the Mexican Americans who predominantly live there now and uh, and the Russian Molokans, these refugees from religious persecution in Russia, they all remember Boyle Heights as theirs. But the reason they wound up there is because the other half of Los Angeles wouldn't let them live there. <laughs> there were these things called restrictive covenants. So they wound up in Boyle Heights. And they didn't kill each other. They actually got along. So I rode the gold line that first day, not really expecting much. I grew up on the west side of Los Angeles. I had been to Boyle Heights maybe all of twice to have a taco and feel brave. Um, <laughs> And I fell in love with the place. It's this totally walkable neighborhood where you can run half a dozen errands in an hour and never set foot in a chain store and never turn the ignition on a car. And I just fell for it. And the next thing I knew, uh, after finding a way to live there um, by asking a landlord with a vacant storefront if I could basically improvise a, an illegal loft in back, mm -hmm. the next thing I knew, the branch library down the street, Benjamin Franklin Library, the first branch library in Los Angeles because that's where the mule car line from downtown used to stop. Once a Carnegie library, but no longer, um, replaced with a significantly less beautiful branch library. Um, they announced they were closing Mondays, which may not sound like a real drag to you guys because you're on the verge, unless you vote for Measure X, uh, and all your neighbors do too, of a significantly graver loss. but. This had never happened in Los Angeles before. They never lost a full day of operations citywide. And I've been the book critic for the San Francisco Chronicle, so I'm sitting on this great big pile of books, five, six, seven thousand books, and all of a sudden, the library down the street, the neighborhood around me that had been so hospitable was about to have even less access to books than it ever had before. So, so I, I had a dumb idea. I, I said to myself, if I open my doors and you know, lent any book in the place for free to anybody for three weeks. Um, and if they wanted to keep a book that was great, I'd just ask them half price, except if they were from Boyle Heights, I'd ask them for a dollar. I wondered what would happen. And what happened was, if you ever have called, by the way, to doubt the influence of the press in this day and age, you should have seen Libro Schmibros, which is the name I gave to the lending library, the day the front page story in the LA Times ran. There was a line of about 12 people at the stroke of 12 out onto the sidewalk, um, risking sideswiping because it wasn't that wide of a sidewalk. Um, who knows who Ry Cooter is? Great musician, great guitarist, son of Santa Monica, Buena Vista Social Club, Paris, Texas, a real citizen of Southern California and, uh, and, and model citizen of the musical world, was there with four boxes of mystery novels waiting good to donate them. Him. What's that? Good for him. Oh, good for him, good for us, good for everybody. And so were the dozen people out there with him.